That's right. It's time to dig in the archives, dust them off, and play them again. Classic sports. Only on cable. Only on TSPN. Amador's local television station. Hi, everybody. Larry Sonato for Tom Slavic Television Productions. Welcome to the Game of the Week. Coming up, high school playoff baseball from Tony Zupo Field in Lodi between Argonaut and Legrand High Schools. And on the mound right now for Legrand, as you can see, the senior right-hander, Scott Nolan, with a record of 4-0 and and an ERA of about 2 point. High school playoff baseball, the championship game of Division Three or small schools, Sac Joaquin section. Argonaut got here by defeating the defending champs, Folsom, in semifinal action Saturday. Legrand likewise advanced with a win over Marysville. Thus, two teams from the southern leagues of the section meet for the championship. Your overall sponsor of this cable cast is Prospect Motors, your local authorized General Motors dealer where your best buy is nearby. Helping Prospect Motors sponsor this game of the week are Amador Motors, Volcano Telephone, Amador Toyota, and Aces NorCal Solid Waste Systems. We certainly thank them. How about you? The first pitch, Nolan against Gary Thomas is coming up, so don't go away. Championship, Sac Joaquin Section Baseball to follow after this. 6.30 as he went 1-4-3 in the first playoff game. So Thomas batting about 6.30. The senior, and he will be pitching for Argonaut in this game, is up there to face Nolan here at Tony Zupo Field in Lodi. Here comes the first pitch from the right-hander, about 5-7. Fastball strike. Nolan can throw everything, according to uh, his uh, coach, Randy Lappin. And he's sneaky fast, and that was a sneaky fast fastball for the first pitch. There's the curve. Long fly ball, deep to left field, over the left fielder's fence. It's to the base of the wall, and Thomas opens the game with a double. That's the kind of hitting we're accustomed to with Gary Thomas. He leads the team with seven home runs, lots of doubles, and he... He hit a slow curve, it would appear, by Scott Nolan for a long double. It went over left fielder Brandon Kale's head, hit at the base of the fence out there about 325 feet. And so Thomas is on second with nobody out. And up there is Justin White, a 440 hitter, Justin a Jr. and the right fielder for Dave Gonzalez and the Argonaut Mustangs. They're giving Gary plenty of time and he's putting on uh, his jacket. Uh, White uh, is in there. We uh, warn you now that there are four Gonzaleses in this game. Actually, three Gonzaleses and one Gonzalves. Legrand has a couple Gonzaleses. See, they're going to go for one, or I'm sure they'll probably hit away. No sacrifice here. Thomas is at second. Nolan's pitch. Hit into right field. It's going to drop in there for a hit, and Thomas will score. So, two batters, two hits. Argonaut leads one to nothing. RBI for Justin White. He hit it where it was pitched, a slow curve, the outside part of the plate. He slapped it into right field, and before Sam Gonzalez could throw it in, Gary Thomas had scored from second base. Next batter, Joe Evans, against Folsom. He hit a crucial first inning double, which uh, kept a rally going, knocked in a run, and was the uh, principal reason why they defeated the Folsom Bulldogs. There's a sneaky fastball in on Evans, perhaps a little inside. Joe went for it and fouled it off. White was going, and uh, he has to trot back to first base. Amador Motors, your locally owned and operated Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, and Jeep Eagle dealership, Main Street, Sutter Creek, featuring the Codas. Four-wheel drive, club cabs, regular cabs, and two-wheel drive are in stock and ready to test drive. Make your move to Dodge at Amador Motors. Oh, Evans slaps a hit. I, I don't mean this uh, really in any derogatory sense, but it almost appears that Nolan is pitching batting practice. The pitchers seem to be very uh, fat and not too fast, and very fat, and uh, Argonaut batters are simply clubbing them. 
A third straight hit here in the first inning. Against Folsom, Argonaut scored four runs in the top of the first, and that's all they needed, and they won it. So here they are against LeGrand in the top of the first inning. They have one run in, nobody out. Runners at first and second, and returning to the lineup. And uh, the cleanup batter is Travis Andrews, who sprained a wrist, sat out the last game against Folsom. He's got that wrist wrapped, but he is in the lineup now. He uh, could bat last time, and he did one time, but he couldn't throw. This time he's in the lineup, and he's batting and throwing. So the first left-handed batter facing Nolan, uh, three right-handers got hits off of him here in the first inning. Fastball outside against the left-handed batting Andrews for ball one. So the top of the first inning, Argonaut leading already 1-0. They've got three straight hits, nobody out. And up there is Travis Andrews, who's batting about 480. So the first batters for Argonaut, 630 for Thomas, White 440, Evans about 500, Andrews uh, 450 or thereabouts. Up next will be Mitch Davis, followed by Tim Sear and Mark Gonzalez. So Scott Nolan, a 4-0 record and two ERAs, uh, running into bats here in the first inning. There was a fastball low. Four ball two with one strike. The Grand defeated Marysville to get here, and they also defeated uh, Linden and Somerville. Ball three. Nolan probably trying to bear down and put more on it since he's been hit soundly by the three previous batters, and consequently he's getting a little wild. So we have a count of three balls and one strike on him here. A bounder, a single by Andrews, and the bases will be loaded. No, the runner is coming in. Justin White comes in, and safe at third base is Joe Evans. The right fielder apparently juggled the ball a little bit. I didn't think that anybody was going to score. I didn't think anybody was going to score, but they fumbled the ball in right field, so consequently the run came in. Whether they'll give him an error or not, I don't know. So Andrews hits the fourth straight hit, nobody out. The bases, uh, one, uh, see, two runs are in, and Andrews is at first, and Joe Evans is at third, and uh, the coach for LeGrand comes out to talk to his right-hander. That's Coach Randy Lappin, his second year coaching, and he's wondering what's happening to his ace here, uh, Scott Nolan. Four straight hits off Nolan, nobody down. We're still in the top of the first inning, and Argonaut leads two to nothing. Big, big, big Argonaut crowd here at Tony Zuffo Field, and you can hear them in the background. Bases loaded with, check that, not bases loaded, first and third. Let's see if the runner at first, Andrews, will be going. We would imagine so, with nobody down and Davis up there. In the dirt by Nolan. I would think, even though he's a senior, he would have to be rattled somewhat after four straight hits in a championship Sacco Keen section baseball game. He probably hasn't been treated that unkindly all season. Ball one. Curve ball. The runner goes down. He's safe. Andrews is safe at second. The throw from catcher uh, Tony Ortegon. Uh, uh, got there on one bounce and had it got there on the fly they wouldn't have got him so runners now at second and third nobody down remember and uh, Davis up there so Argonaut would be very disappointed if they didn't get those two runners in just missing the outside corner with a fastball and the count is two balls and one strike on Mitch Davis Mitch batting about 310 or thereabouts. Uh, a junior, third baseman, utility man. He does everything for this team. A hard bounder and an error. One run scores. Nobody's out. Shortstop Carlos Castaneda made an error on a routine ground ball by Davis. So Davis is on on an error. The run scored on the error. It's now 3-0. Still nobody out. Andrews is at third base, and Davis is at first. The batter now will be Tim Sear, the sophomore shortstop and pitcher. It was his superlative pitching against Folsom. 
for five innings, four nothing lead, only a two hitter that uh, won the game for Argonaut against the defending champions. Sear up there against Nolan. Nolan allowed four straight hits and then an error, in fact a couple of errors, probably the right fielder made an error, the shortstop is uh, debited with an error on that last play, and so still nobody out here in the top of the first inning, three runs already in. Fastball at the knees for a strike. Tim Sear, the transfer up from Stockton uh, this January, and indeed are they glad he did, because he's been a mainstay of this club, though only a sophomore. Fastball by Nolan, a missed by Sear, and probably for the first time in the game, uh, Nolan is ahead of a batter, two strikes and no balls. Nobody out yet, Andrews at third and Davis at first. There goes Davis. Sear throws a curve, safe at second with a steal is Davis. So the first out is Tim Sear striking out. Mark Gonzalez up now. Batting about 430, Mark had a clutch uh, single in the first inning against Bolson to bat in two runs. So even though he's batting in the tail end of the order in the seventh position, he's batting about 430, and he's a power hitter and a clutch hitter. So it's like having a second cleanup man with runners at second and third and just one down. Nolan's curve breaks way outside. Uh, Ortegon had to go way outside to get it for ball one. See those 1991 S10 pickups now at Prospect Motors. The four-door S10 has either two or four-wheel drive. As Gonzalez uh, fouls one back, your personal pickup is ready and it's a winner. With so many styles to choose from, the S10 is designed to fit your lifestyle and work style like a glove. So see the 1991 Chevy S10 pickups now at Prospect Motors in Jackson. Second strike on Gonzalez. So Nolan, after a very poor start, is getting a little tough here, and Argonaut would be unhappy if they couldn't get those two runners in from third and second here with just one down in the top of the top of the first inning. Leading three nothing. Uh, waited a little long, so he stepped out of there. Your personal pickup is ready, and it's a winner. With so many styles to choose from, the S10 is designed to fit your lifestyle and work style like a glove. Nolan, getting tough, strikes out Gonzalez. And so there are two down. Runners still at second and third. And Daryl Bird, senior left fielder, batting around 300, steps up. I can recall a clutch hit to Daryl laced against Amador in the final league game, so he's no slouch with the bat. Yeah. Nolan is suddenly getting faster, or the Argonaut bats getting slower because they're way behind these uh, fastballs. I think Nolan was trying some curves, some of them hung, and he was getting hit. Now he's going to the fast stuff. Yeah. Outside corner, strike two. He's shaking his arm like perhaps he's having a little arm trouble. I'm not sure. A real rocky start for the right-hander. He seems to be settling down. He got him, so he struck out the side, but Argonaut scores three times in the top of the first. And after a half inning of play, Argonaut three, and the LeGrand Bulldogs coming up. Due to the length of the game, we are going to move ahead to the top of the second inning. LeGrand scores no runs in the bottom of the first, and the final outcomes on this pickoff play from Gary Thomas to Travis Andrews. There will be no further cuts in this game. Designated hitter Keith Ryan will be the first batter, and he's batting ninth in the order. Who, For whom is he designated? Well, Sean Eskimia, the left fielder. So Ryan is up there, the ninth man in the order, and keeps batting around 310 or thereabouts. He's just a sophomore. So Nolan struck out in the side, but not before he gave up three runs in the first inning. Let's see what he does this time. He's probably settled down. Uh, Ryan went for a inside fastball, and Ortegon missed it. Went off him. I don't think it was tipped for strike one. Keith is just a sophomore. He hasn't uh, seen action, and you might say this high a caliber of competition. He may be a little bit nervous. Fastball right over the heart of the plate for strike two. 
Keith has good power. We saw him hit a long home run earlier this year. So he's just a sophomore. There are three sophomores on the Argonaut squad. Curveball, he went after it, strike three. So uh, Nolan uh, throws a couple of fastballs and then that uh, jug handle curve well wide of the plate and the Argonaut batters are going for it. So uh, one down here in the top of the second and up steps Gary Thomas who started off the game against Nolan with a double to the foot of the fence in left field 325 feet from home plate. Maybe uh, Kale out there will be playing a little bit deeper this time. Gary was only one for three against Folsom. Well, now he's one for one and getting back to up as his normal average is 640 or thereabouts. Boy, they're giving him the outside corner. Of course, it's hard for us. We can't even see the plate because of the catcher and the umpire, so we have to guess. But it seems like anything outside there, they're giving uh, to the pitcher. That was too far outside. Good fastball. One of those sneaky fast fastballs, as Coach Lappin uh, calls it. So Argonaut leading 3-0 here, top of the second inning. Nolan, fastball again, trying hard, low and outside. Ortegon misses it. And ball two, strike one. Thomas, being a pitcher, prides himself on being able to tell, uh, by intuition perhaps, what the pitcher's going to be throwing next. So he can guess. He knew the curve was coming. Third baseman, plenty of time, throw to first, and he's out. Uh, third baseman Raul Gonzalez uh, throwing to first baseman Jonathan Yunus for the put out and so Nolan after lots of trouble in the first inning has settled down and he's uh, uh, set down five Argonaut batters in a row here as Justin White steps up. White singled in the first inning uh, to uh, bring Thomas in. Uh, Nolan has got the outside of that plate uh, down pat. He may have been jittery there. Oh, the curveball. They really are sucking for that curveball. So he gets ahead with a fastball and he brings in that sweeping curve and they're going for it no matter where it is. Two strikes on White and White steps out of there. So the two down here in the top of the second inning, the Grand Bulldogs of the Southern League, the Argonaut Mustangs of the Motherload League, uh, LeGrand, a second place team, Argonaut the champions. Here they're meeting for the section championship of the small schools, uh, Division Three. Small schools, what's that? Any school from zero to about 900. Over 900, I believe, you uh, go into Division Two. So uh, both these schools, uh, in fact, uh, LeGrand about 330 and uh, Argonaut about 380. Normally they're playing much larger schools than they are, but tonight uh, comparable schools in enrollment are playing. Second inning, top of the second, two down, Argonaut up. Batter Justin White facing uh, Scott Nolan, the LeGrand senior right-hander. Fastball wide for ball two, two and two count. Prospect Motors, your authorized General Motors dealer in Amador County, including the new generation of Oldsmobiles. So check out the new generation's 1990s now. <laughs> Castaneda has to hurry, and he got him. So credit Nolan with an assist, Castaneda with assist, and Nunes with a put out. That ends the inning. After inning and a half, it's Argonaut three and LeGrand nothing. <laughs> Bottom of the second inning here at Tony Zuko Field in Lodi, the championship game of the Sac Joaquin section, Division Three, or small schools, Argonaut and LeGrand. Up is Ferdy or Fernando Nava, the designated hitter, uh, batting for the second baseman, Cesar Guzman. He's batting 290. There's a grounder to short. I don't know how it got under Tim Sears' glove, but it did. An error on the sophomore shortstop. Nava is on base uh, because of the error to open the inning. Gary saying that's okay, Tim. And Tim was down on it, too. It's hard to imagine how, uh, how that got through, but it, it did. So Nava is on, and Brandon Kale, the left fielder and senior, batting 364 is up there. I think Argonaut played about errorless ball in the first game against Folsom. This time, uh, no. All right, number 14. 
<laughs> and that's Jamie Wagner is going to her first base. And uh, Nava is uh, getting a pinch runner. Whether that means he can stay in the lineup, I'm not quite sure about that. Anyway, Wagner is in at least to run. And Nava for Nava and the uh, Kale is up. On the mound, uh, Gary Thomas. Argonaut leading 3-0 here in the bottom of the second. Thomas Wild with his first pitch, high and outside for ball one. The Grand Bulldogs, second place team in the Southern uh, League, uh, Modesto Christian, the champion, uh, Argonaut beat them earlier. A snap throw, they picked off one runner in the first inning, got him on a rundown, and uh, so LeGrand has to be careful. Nobody out, runner on first base, Thomas Wild again for ball two. So Gary hasn't really looked too sharp, and uh, except for Tim Sear, none of these uh, pitchers we've seen have looked really too sharp in the early innings. I don't think a nerves is bothering Gary, but he's just not, uh, uh, doesn't have the control. There's a high pop-up. Uh, uh, White coming in very hard and makes the catch. We thought for a moment it might uh, bloop in there, but it did not. It was high enough that Justin White had time to uh, catch it for a one out. So Wagner is still at first, one down. And uh, the first baseman, Jonathan Nunez, uh, a senior batting 358, is up there. These uh, batting averages for these teams are awfully high. And, uh, well, they're, they're a championship teams, so they, they should be high. Thomas uh, nonchalantly a throw to first place, uh, first base to Travis Andrews. Uh, uh, no intent to, to catch him, just to let him know that uh, he could throw over there. Wagner's going to have to be careful. Uh, Nunes holds up, and uh, the umpire said it's high, no doubt about it. <clears throat> so one down here in the bottom of the second inning, Argonaut leading uh, three to nothing. Ball one count on Nunes with a pinch runner at first base for Nava, Jamie Wagner. Amador Motors, where you can keep on trucking, keep on saving. Amador Motors has diesels galore, including the 1990 Cummins turbo diesels in stock. You know, that's the diesel everyone is raving about. Two-wheel or four-wheel drive with the highest torque available in any production light utility truck. So test drive a diesel soon at Amador Motors, Main Street, Sutter Creek. Curveball by Thomas in the dirt, or close to it. Ball two. So, as we all know, you don't want to get behind the batters, even if you're a good pitcher. Then you have to come in with something fat. Snap throw, and he's out. A snap throw by Thomas caught Wagner off first base. Andrews slapped the tag. So it's almost like Thomas was lulling Wagner to sleep, and suddenly the... The Cobra strike with the throw, and uh, Wagner was out. So even though Thomas hasn't pitched that sharply in the second inning, they're getting them out one way or another. There's a curve ball, but it was high for ball three. I don't have much voice left after that Folsom game. I'm already beginning to cough a little bit, so it'll be interesting how far, how long I go as well, how, how long Thomas goes. So Thomas uh, walks another, but he hasn't get, gotten in any trouble yet because they've picked up a couple of people. So number two is up, that's Sam Gonzalez. The junior right fielder batting 377 to be followed by Henry Avina, the senior center fielder, and Raul Gonzalez, the third baseman, a sophomore, will be batting uh, in the ninth spot if he comes to bat. But there are two outs here in uh, 
uh, in the inning, uh, sitting in our booth, and we can't get our camera to him right now, Clark Coover, the commissioner of the Sac Joaquin section, CIF. Thomas almost got another pickoff, a throw to Andrews, and uh, came close to... This is the commissioner of the CIF, Clark Coover, and my wife, Pauline uh, Sonato. Uh, uh, she's too young. <laughs> yes, much. <laughs> oh, we're talking with Clark Coover here. Meanwhile, action is going on. Uh, we have mutual friend, the former commissioner in the Southern, uh, Southern California, Kenny Fagans. He was my junior high school coach many years ago, and both uh, Darlene Sonato, who's here, and I went to that school uh, a long time ago, and, uh, and uh, Clark Coover, the commissioner up here, knew Kenny Fagans quite well. Thomas hit the outside corner that time, so Thomas really not sharp at all, but no damage done yet here, and we're in the bottom of the second inning. Two are outs, two balls, one strike, and a runner at first base. Strike two by Sam Gonzalez. That one may have been a little bit low, but Sam went for it anyway. Watch Amador this week on your favorite cable channel, Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m., and Saturday and Sundays at 2.30 p.m., Amador County's own television magazine. Strike three, Thomas strikes out uh, Sam Gonzalez to end the inning, and uh, no score for LeGrand. After two complete innings, Argonaut three, and LeGrand nothing. Classic sports, only on cable, only on TSPN. Amador's local television station. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now back to the game of the week. Argonaut versus LeGrand, the championship game from 1990. With sportscaster, Larry Sonato. We're pulling the mic aside here, so the gentleman in the, the blue blazer and the cap is Clark Coover. Mr. Just look this way and say hi, Clark. <laughs> the commissioner of the Sac Joaquin section. Checks in the mail, Clark. <laughs> the checks in the mail. He's the man uh, that everyone uh, checks with. I'm not worried about before they can broadcast one of these CIF games. We've been dealing with him for years and years, uh, broadcasts on uh, radio and, and now television. So Nolan, after a very rocky start, settled down. <laughs> and the batter will be Joe Evans who got a hit in the first inning as most people did. Fastball and uh, fouled back by Evans. So Argonaut leaped out to a lead just like they did against Folsom. They scored four against Folsom in the first and they held on to win four to one. Now against Legrand they've scored three in the first and they're leading three to nothing. Evans up there, senior catcher. Argonaut will only lose three or four players. Evans and Thomas and Daryl Bird are seniors, and I think Elton Dixon is a senior. But otherwise, uh, this whole team is coming back. A championship uh, JV team will send up about three players, because most of that team was freshmen, I was told today, by Coach Regis Kearney. So Argonaut has... Uh, We've called it a dynasty, but that's a little premature, obviously. But uh, they've got uh, they've got a good chance. If they're champions this year, they've got good chance to repeat next year. Folsom thought that, and then they got defeated there by uh, Argonaut. <clears throat> so Nolan, a little wild here. They've, he's run the count to three balls and one strike. Uh, first batter up. Evans in the gap, but I think he'll be held to a single. So Evans has his second straight hit. He's on first with nobody out here in the top of the third inning. And up steps Travis Andrews, who also singled uh, in the first inning. The first four batters uh, got hits for Argonaut in the first. And with some errors and other things, uh, that's why they scored three runs. 
So Andrews, even with a semi-sprained left uh, wrist, is up there to bat. He's a heavy sticker, normally the cleanup batter, which he's batting tonight. Nolan, and they're going, and there's Zort Ortegon's throw. It's late, and it gets away from uh, Evans uh, decided, no, he's slid, he's not going to try for it. So Ortegon's throw was poor, and then it got away from shortstop Castaneda. Guzman was backing up too, but it even got away from him. So Evans is on with a steal. And Travis Andrews up against Nolan. So Nolan set him down in order in the second inning and struck out the, the side in the first after giving up three runs. Now he's getting into trouble again with a runner at second and Andrews up there with nobody out. There's a curveball that broke over the plate. Andrews waited for it patiently and then as it came over, he uh, hit it. This championship game of the week between Argonaut and LeGrand is sponsored, among others, by Volcano Telephone, which offers custom calling services like call waiting, call forwarding, three-way calling, and speed calling. Fastball fouled back by Andrews. More about that speed calling feature in just a moment. The overall sponsor game of the week, Argonaut versus LeGrand, Prospect Motors in Jackson, your authorized General Motors dealer. Check out the personal driving excitement of the 1990 Pontiacs now at Prospect Motors. Uh, Commissioner Coover, who plays here tomorrow night? Is there another championship no, game? No, the, the next championship game is uh, Elk Grove versus Turlock in Division One on Friday night at Billy Hebert in Stockton. No more games here? No, this is the end of it for right. Division 3. Division 2 ended up last Friday. Division 2 ended up last Friday. This ends up Division 3 and uh, Division 1, uh, Elk Grove. Who's Elk Grove playing again? Turlock. Turlock uh, will uh, be Friday at Billy Hebert Field. Meanwhile, bottom, oh, Andrews went for a high fastball and struck out. Nolan uh, keeps uh, flexing his right arm like he's having a little bit of arm problem. He broke uh, his wrist earlier in the season, uh, but I believe it was his left wrist. I don't believe it was his pitching wrist, but I'm not positive about that. He was out for half the season, then he uh, came back, and he's done very well. He's 4-0. and So one down, Evans at second base, and up steps Mitch Davis, the junior third sacker. Curve ball over for a strike. Dolan has an excellent curve. Uh, most of the time it's wide of the plate, but uh, Argonaut bats are fishing for it. That time it broke right over. Fastball fouled up and back by uh, Davis for strike two. Argonaut three. Legrand uh, nothing. Bottom of the third with one down and Joe Evans on second. He singled and stole second and Mitch Davis up with a two strike count. Curve ball, he missed it. <laughs> Nolan is striking out a lot of Mustangs. He had three in the first inning. We don't have a score uh, book in our press box, but he's striking out a lot of Mustangs. But the important stat, and you get a good picture of Evans leading off second base and Nolan on the mound, the important stat, of course, is Argonaut three runs and LeGrand none. Tim Sear up there, he struck out the first time up. Oh, fastball right over. That was Tim's pitch, and he decided it wasn't. He let it go by. Ball one and strike one. Tim Sear, just a sophomore, shortstop. He pitched in that Folsom game so admirably. Boy, Nolan's curve, making the Argonaut uh, batters... Uh, uh, look bad here as they go for that outside curve and most of the time it's not over the plate. Fastball strike. Drop the ball. Ortegon has to throw him out and he does. So Nolan once again sets down the Mustangs with just one hit here in the third and after two and a half innings of play it is Argonaut three and Legrand nothing. The lady with the earphones there, Susan Slavik of Tom Slavik Television Productions. Many of the shots you're seeing, she shot. All right, bottom of the third inning, uh, Legrand, the home team, and the batter, number 11, Henry Avina, the senior center fielder, batting 286. 
No. All right. A substitution by Argonaut, uh, and I'm not sure why, but Sean Boring has gone in at shortstop, replacing Tim Sear. So the sophomore Boring is in at shortstop for Sear. Ground ball to Gonzalez at second. He whips it to Andrews for the out. And Avina is down. Maybe we can find out why Sear, perhaps um, Coach Gonzalez uh, wants him ready to be warming up and to come in to pitch at some time. Not that Thomas is in any trouble, but he's the pitcher that would come in, so maybe he's coming out to rest and be ready, uh, maybe warm up a little bit uh, in case he should have to come in relief. Thomas's pitch uh, to uh, Raul Gonzalez, the sophomore right uh, third baseman, high for ball one. So one down here in the uh, in the third inning, bottom of the third, and uh, swing and a miss that time by Gonzalez. We repeat again that uh, Legrand's got two Gonzalez's, both Z's, uh, Sam and Raul. And of course, Argonaut curveball, uh, Mitch Davis uh, to Andrews for the put out. That one was real slow. I thought at first that Mitch would have to uh, sprint out there to cut it off, but it slowed down considerably. And uh, an easy put out for Davis, and he threw him out. So two down, and the batter, the leadoff batter and pitcher, Scott Nolan, the leading batter on the LeGrand team, his average is 417, but he sat out a high pop-up that's playable. Andrew should have it. It goes back into fair territory, and uh, Andrews has it for the out. Three up and three down as Thomas settles down for Argonaut. So after three complete innings of play, it's uh, Argonaut three and Legrand nothing. Striding to third base, Coach Dave Gonzalez, the coach of the year in the Mother Load League coach of the Mother Load League champions, Argonaut Mustangs, leading 3-0 here as we go to the top of the fourth inning at Tony Zupo Field in Lodi, and the batter is Mark Gonsalves against uh, Nolan. Ooh, way late on that fastball. So Scott Nolan, after a very uh, inauspicious start in the first inning, allowing three runs, has really settled down and pitched a very good game. Low that time for ball one. Uh, and the same thing could be said for McCann of Folsom, but he gave up four runs and then uh, had no problem. Curveball tried that time a little high for ball two. Gonzalez batting well over 400. Uh, he had some power. He's hit a couple of home runs. Fastball corner. Yeah, they give him that corner pretty much. So two and two count on Gonzalez. Uh, top of the fourth inning, uh, Argonaut leading 3-0. Nolan's pitch. Boy, that's clapped hard, but a one-hop bounce to Castaneda. And Nunes had to catch it and tag uh, Gonzalez going down for the putout. Mark really hit that one hard, but uh, alas for him, it was right at somebody. And more than that, it was a one-hop uh, bounce, but hard hit. Daryl Bird is the next batter against Scott Nolan. One uh, custom calling service Volcano Telephone offers is speed calling. At Volcano Telephone, that's dialing frequently called or emergency numbers by using only one or two digits. That means greater security in times of emergency. You can reach help by dialing only one or two numbers. Frequently dialed local or long distance numbers can be dialed easily, quickly, and accurately. Moreover, speed calling gives you the added convenience and peace of mind for children, the elderly, and the handicapped. For more information about speed calling, contact Volcano Telephone, downtown Pine Grove, phone 296-7502. So Daryl Bird has uh, watched three uh, balls go by. Three balls, no strike count here with one down in the top of the fourth inning and Argonaut leading Legrand 3 nothing. In this, the championship of the Sac Joaquin section. First time we know that an Alvador County baseball team has gone to the championship game of the section finals. No doubt, way back in the old days, uh, it may have happened before. But in uh, the more modern times, and what's modern times? 1940s, 50s on, nobody can remember when it's happened before. 
Keith Ryan up with uh, Bird at first base, taking a modest lead. Fastball low. No, it looks low from my uh, viewpoint. From my viewpoint is uh, distorted, obviously, because the ball was called a strike. So uh, strike one on uh, Ryan. Uh, Ortegon, the catcher, goes out to talk to Nolan. And meanwhile, back at first is Daryl Bird. Championship game, Sac Joaquin section, Legrand and Argonaut. Tom Slavic Television Productions from Tony Zupo Field in Lodi. Great uh, Argonaut uh, Amador Motherload League crowd here. We've seen players from Amador and Linden because naturally they're rooting for their league's uh, champion to say, hey, our league's the best. We won the championship of this whole thing. Somerville beat uh, Argonaut twice, in fact, and uh, Linden beat him once. Otherwise, he beat everybody all the time. Curve ball, curves over. Keith knew it. <clears throat> kind of backed out. Again, a sophomore. He probably hasn't seen as many curves as he should, so he's uh, learning. Gary Thomas will be up uh, <clears throat> next. Uh, curve ball, and Keith let that one go. That was well outside. Uh, just going by our microphone, Matt Tomaleski, who was a fifth place finisher in the Sac Joaquin section uh, JV track finals in the uh, 300 uh, hurdles, I believe it was. Fastball looks low. It is low. And Sutton Ryan is on. No, no, it's three and two. I thought he had three balls right off the bat, but maybe that was Bird. And Ryan is explaining to the umpire, I'm sorry, I thought it was this, but it wasn't. So a three and two count, and Ryan comes back, uh, Bird staying at first base. Argonaut leading three nothing here over the Legrand Bulldogs. They beat the Folsom Bulldogs Saturday to get to this championship game. Curveball, Keith waited for that one. Uh, Legrand defeated Marysville to get here. Prior to that, they defeated Linden and uh, Somerville. Linden 7-6, Somerville 3-1, Marysville 5-3 on Saturday. And here they are in the championship game. 3-2 pitch again. Ball four. <laughs> Keith waited. He didn't move until the umpire definitely said he walked. You're watching Game of the Week, Argonaut and LeGrand, CIF Sac Joaquin Section High School Baseball Championship game from Tony Zupo Field in Lodi as Gary Thomas steps to the plate. He's one for two. He opened the game with a double to the foot of the left field fence. This cable cast is sponsored by Prospect Motors, Amador Motors, Volcano Telephone, Aces NorCal Solidway Systems, and Amador Toyota. We certainly thank them. We hope that you will, too. Thomas up there with one down and mates aboard in first and second. And there's a hit. Let's see, the runner's coming. Bird is coming into home plate. They cut it off, but there's no play. Nunez cuts it off. Keith Ryan gets to uh, third base. And Gary Thomas is on it first. Now that guy is a hitter. He hits the ball where it is. That time he smacked it right up the middle for a single, so he's two for three, and that's about what his average has been. Every three times at bat, he hits about two times. So Thomas has got a runs batted in. Argonaut leads four to nothing, and up is Justin White. And Justin, Justin Jr., has done a lot of damage with the bat. He got a hit in that first inning when they scored three runs. So Justin's up there batting about 440 or thereabouts with one down. So Nolan went a long time setting down Argonaut after giving up three runs, but now he's back in a pickle again here with one down, one run in, a runner on first and a runner on third, and Justin White up there. And uh, let's see what Argonaut's going to do here. White steps in. I imagine this team hits so well they're just hitting away. Thomas may be going, though, to get to second base. Uh, Justin White steps out. They're not sure what was going to happen at that time, so he stepped out of there. This is Larry Sonato for Tom Slavic Television Productions. Thanks for staying with us for continued baseball action in the game of the week between Argonaut and Legrand in Lodi. The winner is and will be crowned the best small schools or Division Three baseball team in the Sac Joaquin CIF section. And in our box is Clark Hoover, the commissioner of the Sac Joaquin section. 
taking plenty of time, and as well they should. The pitch out, or just a, a, a uh, ball, it was almost a wide enough to be, it looked like a pitch out at first, but I guess it wasn't. They're certainly uh, looking at uh, Coach uh, Randy Lapin very carefully here, because obviously there goes the batter. Oh, infield fly. Thomas is, has to go back. White is out for two outs. So a big out for Nolan. And Joe Evans, who's really been a clutch hitter in this series, uh, batted well against Folsom. He got a hit in that first inning. So Joe Evans is a tough out. And Joe Evans, who's really been a clutch hitter in this series, uh, batted well against Folsom. He got a hit in that first inning. So Joe Evans is a tough out, particularly with runners aboard. We haven't told you lately, Argonaut four, Legrand nothing in this championship game. Curveball tried by Nolan in the first pitch, low and outside for ball one. Argonaut four to nothing here in the top of the fourth inning. They scored three in the first and they have one here in the bottom of the fourth. They have two down and a runner in scoring position. Uh, Keith Ryan at third base. The runner goes, grounding ball into the outfield for a hit. Evans knocks in another run and Thomas goes to third base. Argonaut now leads five to nothing. So Joe Evans, the senior catcher, comes through again. And the Argonaut Mustangs leading Legrand five to nothing. And Travis Andrews, and we won't make excuses for him, he's an outstanding hitter batting over 400 this season. Uh, he sprained his ankle in a gym mishap, missed the Folsom game. He's in there now. He's certainly not 100%, but uh, probably pretty close to it. So we'll make no excuses if he uh, doesn't uh, get a hit or uh, gets put out. Deep fly to left, but it should be catchable by left fielder, and it is. Uh, Brandon Kale makes the catch, but not before Argonaut scores a couple, and after uh, three and a half inning play, it is Argonaut five and Legrand Bulldogs nothing. Bottom of the fifth, that's Sean Boring at shortstop. Gary Thomas is on the mound, and stepping to the plate will be Carlos Castaneda, the shortstop. Argonaut leading, there's a hit into right field, unless Justin White dies for it, can't get it. Castaneda will go for two, and he may try for three. So, Justin White made a heroic dive for the ball. No question about that. It was a hit all the way. And so Castaneda's on second base with a double to open the bottom of the fourth inning for Legrand and Argonaut leading five to nothing. Tony Ortegon, the catcher, is up now. Tom Slavic Television Productions, your locally owned and operated video production company, believes our business community is downright generous. Consider this, it's local business folk who continuously donate merchandise or cash to school, club, and civic promotions and fundraisers. Join us in congratulating and thanking our business community for its big heart. We can say thanks this way, and you can say thanks by buying merchandise and services from local businesses whenever you can. Thank you. Thomas has one and one count on uh, Ortegon as Castaneda is at second base after opening in this bottom of the fourth inning with a double. He's getting a big lead, but there's nobody there to throw to. Always there's a call for the balk. The Bach birds in the stands, I guess you could call them. Bach, 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 Bach. Maybe the turkeys, turkey callers, but no Bach. Thomas throws back. <laughs> so Boring's now at shortstop for Argonaut. We believe that um, Coach Dave uh, Gonzalez uh, removed him just to have Tim uh, handy uh, in case uh, he needs to go into pitch later on. But Thomas is cruising along well here, but he has a little trouble. Strike that time on Ortegon. 
The leadoff batter opened uh, with a double, and Oregon is up there with nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth inning, and Argonaut leading five to nothing. Curve ball, swing and a miss for the one out. So Thomas has good curve balls as well. We would expect after this series, especially if Argonaut wins, that maybe somebody will rank them at least the top 10 in the state. They defeated the number one ranked team, Folsom, twice this year, and yet they haven't been ranked in the top 10 yet. So maybe they might get into the uh, rankings if, uh, if they win the section championship. We'll wait and see. Cal High Sports ranked Folsom number one in the state, and then and Argonaut's beaten them twice, and Argonaut wasn't in the top ten at all. Swing and a miss by Nava. Nava singled in the first uh, first time up, and then had that pinch runner. Designator hitter for the second base is Cesmar Guzman, batting about 290, but he has good power. Thomas curveball to Thomas. He looks Castaneda back to second, throws to first for the out. Gary is an exceptional fielder. When he doesn't pitch, he plays third base, even though he's a left-hander. He fields, uh, to coin a cliche, uh, cat-like off that mound. Brandon Kale, and we recall Brandon on the LeGrand football team when we did uh, Calaveras LeGrand football earlier this year. He's up there with uh, two down. Swing and a miss. And Castaneda, who opened with a double, may be stranded there unless Kale can come through. Say, so be sure and see the 1991 Previa at Amador Motors. It's the perfect balance of modern curveball over. Oh, I don't know what was wrong with that one. Might have been low. It's the perfect balance of modern style, outstanding performance, and family utility. You'll love what Toyota has done with Previa. And you'll love what uh, Previa's family mover. Evans throws and he's out. Joe Evans throws out Castaneda at third base and that ends the inning. Three up and three down and after four complete innings of play, it is Argonaut five and LeGrand nothing. Television station. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now back to the game of the week. Argonaut versus LeGrand, the championship game from 1990. With sportscaster, Larry Sonato. <laughs> There's a good view of number 13, Mitch Davis, the first batter for the Argonaut Mustangs here in the top of the fifth inning. And the Mustangs cruising toward their first sectional baseball championship, but don't be over optimistic. The game's not over, but they're leading five nothing. Davis up there. They got three in the first and two in the last inning to lead 5-0. Davis up there and Scott Nolan's gone all the way for LeGrand. Sneaky fastball uh, wide. For a ball one. Fastball hit high in the air. We saw some flash. The right fielder's right there to make the catch. Gonzalez uh, has it. And that's Sam Gonzalez, the junior right fielder, for the first out in the bottom of the fifth inning. So Nolan has pitched uh, extremely well in spots and poorly in other spots, and that's why he's trailing five to nothing. Sean Boring, who came into the lineup for Tim Sear at shortstop, is in there. We don't have a batting average for Sean. Uh, he's only played two or three games, so he's been at bat less than ten times. Just a sophomore. He's a pitcher and shortstop. His uh, defensive gem against Folsom uh, prevented uh, the Bulldogs from perhaps scoring several runs uh, in, uh, I forget what inning it was, but they had the bases loaded. Uh, Boring caught a soft uh, line drive, uh, dove for it actually, and then doubled off a runner at second base. Shoring, uh, Boring certainly let that one go by, had good judgment. Strike two, ball one. Oh, 
good uh, swing by Boring. So Nolan, when he's on, he's striking these Mustangs out. He's got a lot of strikeouts in this game, but he's trailing 5 nothing. Gonzalez is up there. <clears throat> Prospect Motors of Jackson, overall sponsor of Game of the Week, is your General Motors dealer and features Buick, the premium American experience. Remember, the Great American Road belongs to Buick. You'll find all the GM cars, trucks, and 4x4s, Prospect Motors in Jackson. Those could be over the heart of the plate, but they appear to me like uh, they're, uh, you know, wide. Curveball curves over the plate for strike two. So when Nolan's on, he's very, very good. Curveball hit long and deep. And uh, the left fielder, it's over the left fielder's head. Gonzalez will go into second, standing up with a double. So Brandon Kale got on his horse and headed back, but couldn't get back there. And that uh, double, uh, more in the alley, so that one's a little bit further than Thomas hit in the first inning. Both of them over Kale's head for stand-up doubles. So with two down here in the top of the fifth, uh, Argonaut has Gonzalez at second base, and up is Daryl Bird, the senior center fielder. Nolan takes plenty of time when he's got runners on, forcing the batters to get out of the batter's box. Tom Slavik, television productions here at Tony Zupo Field in Lodi. I hope you're enjoying this championship Sacquequeen section game. Boy, that curveball has the Argonaut batters fishing. <laughs> Daryl's talking to himself. All league football player, all league basketball player, honorable mention baseball player, scholar. Gets it away, so Gonzalez will go to third. ortegon has got a great uh, throw, and that was a beauty, but much too late to catch Gonzalez at third base. So with two down, Gonzalez is at third, and uh, Bird up. Argonaut leading five to nothing. The all-new uh, Toyota 1991 MR2s are causing talk on Main Street everywhere, and it's not idle talk or just chit-chat. They're saying on the on Main. Bird swings at another curveball. It's got asphalt scorching performance and extra handling. In the elite world of two-seater well-balanced sports cars, this dramatic new mid-engine MR2 doesn't ask for respect, it demands it. Strike three as Nolan's curveball curves over the plate. So more strikeouts for Nolan, but Argonaut continues to lead Five to nothing. So after four and a half innings of play, that's the score with the LeGrand Bulldogs coming up. Mark Gonzalez, you see right there, who got a double for naught in that last inning, except for it helped his batting average, as uh, no one could knock him in. But Argonaut still leads five to nothing, and here we go into the bottom of the fifth inning. So LeGrand Bulldogs have uh, three more ups to get to Gary Thomas and to get back into this game. Gary, a uh, little uh, uh, unsure start early as his control was bad, uh, but uh, no real damage, no real threat. Got a runner at second base, otherwise he's kind of zipped right along here. And Kale was up when they threw out Castaneda at third to end the inning, so he's up there again. We're at Lodi for a Sacroquin section CIF baseball championship game between Argonaut and LeGrand. Thomas, a bounder to Gonzalez. Good bounce. Mark whips it to first to Andrews, and Kale is out. It's what you like to see, the batters hitting ground balls in the infield, making your infielders work. So the score, Argonaut 5 to nothing here. A sponsor of the cable cast is Aces NorCal Solid Waste Systems, a leader in household and commercial garbage collection. For transfer station hours and collection service information, phone 296-2237, 296-2237. The batter, Jonathan Nunes, the uh, first baseman, uh, uh, 358 average going into the game. Thomas hasn't really allowed too many hits here. He's walked uh, a couple, I believe. We don't have a scoreboard here, but he hasn't really allowed too many hits, and he's picked off a runner. 
So he's uh, done his usual working like job. The bounder to Mitch Davis picks it up beautifully. One handed whips to first and that's an out. Mitch's fielding at third has really come on uh, uh, in the playoffs. He's made uh, several uh, superb plays. I wouldn't say that one was superb, but it was certainly an excellent one with a great uh, aplomb. He dug that one out of the grass with one uh, with a mitt and whipped it to first for the out. So two down here in the bottom of the fifth as Gary Thomas behind excellent support moves right along and the batter is Sam Gonzalez. Please. Gary tends to start slowly, I would say, and really picks up strength at the end. So he's liable to be faster and better in these uh, latter innings than he is early. If you're going to get to Thomas, you better get to him early because you're not going to get to him late. Fastball, and he struck him out. The inning is over, and five complete innings are gone at Tony Zupo Field in Lodi, and Argonaut leads five to nothing. Five innings down. Gargonaut continues to lead the LeGrand Bulldogs of the Southern League five to nothing. Keith Ryan will be leadoff batter for Argonaut here in the top of the sixth. Argonaut scored three in the first, two more in the fifth, I believe it was, or maybe it was the fourth, to lead five nothing. Nolan, again, has been spotty. When he's on, uh, they don't hit him at all, and then the, but they got it to him for three runs in the first, and then two. Hey, a hard smash in the gap will go for extra bases. Ryan's got one, he'll go for three. There he goes, and he'll make it. As the cutoff man dropped the ball. They had a chance for him, but uh, Cesar Guzman, the cutoff man and second baseman, dropped the relay from uh, right fielder Sam Gonzalez, and so he didn't have a chance at all, and uh, uh, Ryan went into third base uh, uh, standing up for a triple. So he leads off the inning, and up is Gary Thomas again, who is two for three, a double, then an infield out, and then a single to center. The uh, Best hitting, as far as we know, the best hitter in high school baseball in the state of California, batting about 640. I wish Mr. Coover would check that out. We've tried. We can't, haven't found anybody that hits better than Thomas. He is batting 640, and that's all games. And we can't find anyone who's hit higher. 23. And it looks like they're going to walk him on four pitches here. I guess Nolan's not going to give him anything too good. Commissioner Coovers uh, doesn't believe it, but that's the truth, about 640. So Thomas walks with four. <clears throat> and that's one good way to make sure he doesn't hurt you, just walk him. And White, he's no slouch with the bat either, is up there now with nobody out. Top of the sixth inning. Thomas at first. Keith Ryan at third. We remind you again uh, that uh, this is a mostly junior team, so Argonaut may be back here next year. Let's all pull for him. I think Scott Nolan is gesturing with his arm like it's tightening up, and maybe he wants to come out of the game. I'm not sure. He, he made a motion with his arm. And or maybe that's just to keep it loosening up. So we'll find out whether he stays in there. Thomas is ready now with his jacket. So we're set to play and stepping in there is Justin White with uh, nobody down here in the uh, top of the sixth inning and Argonaut leading five to nothing, threatening to add to it. There goes Thomas. Bounder, they won't get a double play. Castaneda is only plays first. They rifle it to first and there's an out there. Ryan could not score. So having the runner go, certainly prevented the double play. Castaneda did get white at uh, first, but up comes Joe Evans, Mr. Clutch, who's, <coughs> who's gotten a couple of hits today, and the last one, runners on, he drove in a run.
Nolan steps off the mound, and uh, he wants somebody to do something. Prospect Motors, your authorized General Motors dealer in Amador County, your overall sponsor of Cable's Game of the Week. That's home for the 1991 Chevy S10 pickup. Short fly in left field. Kale comes in. He has it. Here comes Ryan. Here comes the throw. He cuts it off. Thomas is back at second. Safe. They cut off the throw from Kale. They whipped it to Guzman. And Thomas very alertly got back to second just in time. So Evans uh, knocks in a run. Sacrifice fly for Evans. The score now Argonaut six, Legrand nothing. And Travis Andrews, if, if I said earlier that he had a sprained ankle, it is a sprained left wrist, and he is up there with two down in the top of the six, and Thomas is at second base. Nolan's gone all the way on the mound for the uh, LeGrand Bulldogs of the Southern Load League, about a 95-mile trip to uh, Lodi. So they're down at the southern extremity of the Sac Joaquin section. Thomas trying to force Nolan to throw, and he does, and he throws it into the center field. Thomas had Nolan com uh, completely uh, rattled on that one. Scott had to throw it, and there's nobody to throw it to. So one pitcher rattled the other one. However, there are two downs, so nobody really heard. A hit probably would have scored anyway, so if Andrews come through really won't make any difference. Aces NorCal Solid Waste System says thanks for watching the game of the week. Aces offers convenient weekly household and commercial pickup service or on-call service for occasional use. Aces serves most unincorporated areas of Amador County and the city of Ione. So call Aces NorCal Solid Waste Systems in Pine Grove 296-2237 296-2237. The game of the week, the championship of the Sac Joaquin section, Division Three. Tony Zuffo Field, Lodi, Larry Sonato here for Tom Slavic Television Productions. Ortegon uh, faking a lot of throws down at third base where Gary Thomas is. Argonaut 6-0 over LeGrand Bulldogs. Andrews, and his timing could be off a little bit after sitting out a game, but... I suppose it shouldn't go off with uh, sitting out just one game, but Travis over a 400 hitter in the cleanup batter. Uh, they won without him against Folsom. <laughs> Andrews lets a called strike go by to the end of the inning. Uh, Thomas remains at third, but another run scores, and after five and a half innings of play here in Lodi, Argonaut six and Legrand uh, nothing and coming up. Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now back to the game of the week. Argonaut versus LeGrand, the championship game from 1990. With sportscaster, Larry Sonato. Say, recycling saves energy, natural resources, and landfill space. Aces NorCal wants to work with you to accomplish the goal of redirecting waste away from landfills and into recycling. Nature recycles, so why shouldn't we? The game of the week and stepping up is Jesse Fernandez, a sophomore, and he is batting for someone and we're not quite sure whom. But he's not in the starting lineup, so Jesse Fernandez, just a sophomore, is in there for Coach Randy uh, Lappin, uh, assisted by Rich Chavez, uh, uh, Rich, who's coached the JVs of the Grand for the last seven years. The Grand were 10 and 4 and 89, didn't make the playoffs. 10 and 4 and 90, and they did make the playoffs, second place, and here they are in the championship game. So they've had an outstanding record at LeGrand. Curveball swung, no, tipped. I thought it was swing and a miss, but uh, Fernandez got uh, a little bit of it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Bottom of the sixth inning. First batter up here, pinch hitter uh, Jesse Fernandez. Argonaut leading six to nothing, and they're six outs away. Bounder to first base Andrews. He's got an unassisted out. And Gary Thomas races over there in case uh, Travis needed any help. Uh, how many hits has the brand got? Would you find out from the scorekeeper? Hits? Hits. One hit? Oh. We checked with the official scorekeeper here. Legrand has got one hit in this game. The bloop double to right field that Justin White just narrowly missed catching. So one bloop double hit is all Gary Thomas has allowed in this championship game. Curveball doesn't quite break over against uh, number 30. And uh, this is a pinch batter too, Enrique Yanez. Junior and uh, Gary Thomas is on the verge of uh, putting a runner on for the first time in a while. That's ball three against Yanez. Fastball low, and he walks him on four pitches. Coach Lapin trying to shake things up by having a couple of pinch batters. He got one of them on, Enrique Yanez, and uh, Scott Nolan, the leadoff man and pitcher, uh, up to the plate now. So one man on, one out, and Nolan up there. Gary Thomas has allowed just one uh, Legrand hit, and he's now pitching in the bottom of the sixth inning. The game of the week, Sacquequeen section championship game as uh, Nolan swings and misses again for strike two. This is another presentation of Tom Slavic Television Productions brought to you by Prospect Motors, Volcano Telephone, by Amador Toyota, Amador Motors, and by Aces NorCal Solid Waste Systems. Why don't you let them know that you appreciate their support? A senior on the mound, a senior in center field, a senior in catcher, and another senior on the bench, and uh, the rest of them are juniors and sophomores. Ooh, Nolan held up. The umpire didn't call a strike. Gary Thomas wanted to strike. Two strikes and a ball. A few boos from Argonaut fans on that call. But uh, generally speaking, these umpires have uh, done an exceptional job. Swing and a miss. Thomas gets stronger as the game, and that's a cliche, but it's true in his case. He kind of starts out, you know, and then he really gets into it, and he's tough to hit in the late innings and easier to hit early. Two outs, bottom of the sixth inning, four outs, four more outs, and the Argonaut Mustangs will be Sacquequeen section champions for the first time ever in baseball. Years and years ago, I'm sure they were sectional champions in something back in the 20s and 30s, but no one can remember that far. We have John Hubbardy in the stands, and he was a Jackson quarterback in 1923 when football first started. Maybe John can remember. Ball two. So Gary's got two outs, one run on, uh, two balls in this batter, but... Uh, no great concern if he concentrates on Castaneda, the shortstop, and gets him out of there. Hit into right field for the second Legrand hit. They have two men on. And the batter should be Tony Ortegon, the catcher, the sophomore batting about 385. He takes off his togs because there were two outs, so he had donned some of them and steps up there. This cable cat's being brought to you by Prospect Motors, Volcano Telephone, Amador Toyota, Amador uh, Motors, Aces, NorCal, Solid Way Systems. Let them know that you appreciate it. So Thomas has allowed only two hits, one of them in this inning, one of loop double earlier. He has two men on. The most Legrand is, uh, they haven't got a runner past second base today. And he's up there with a tough batter and uh, Odegon, the catcher. Curveball outside for ball one. 
I don't know whether Tim Sear or anyone is warming up in the Argonaut bullpen or whether they need to, leading by six. Quick throw. Uh, sliding in uh, was uh, Castaneda, who just singled to right field. Larry Sonato for Tom Slavic. Night baseball here at Tony uh, Zubo Field in Lodi. Bounder to Boring at short, a rifle throw to first. That kid's just a sophomore and he throws like a big leaguer and the inning is over. After six complete innings of play, Argonaut six and Legrand nothing. Okay, top of the seventh inning here, Tony Zufo Field in Lodi, and Argonaut, long fly ball by Mitch Davis in center, right center. It drops in there for a hit. And Davis will go into second with a stand-up double. I'm sure they will give him a hit. Yes, it's a hit. Uh, the center fielder, uh, Henry Avina, I believe it's Avina, unless they put a sub in for him, made a valiant effort for it could not get to it. And hence, Mitch Davis has his first fit of the, hit of the game, and uh, he's on uh, at second base. For chainsaws, weed trimmers, log splitters, mowers, shredders, and blowers, Guy's Saw Center, for parts, service, and savings, you can't go wrong with Guy's. Its huge showroom assures you a large selection of outdoor toys for grown-up boys. So see the professionals at Guy's Saw Center and Highway 88 across from the Bank of Stockton in Pine Grove. Uh, uh, all right, first batter up, Mitch Davis doubles to open the top of the seventh inning here. And up there is Sean Boring, the sophomore shortstop. Boring steps out, Nolan pitches, but time was called, so the pitch does not count. Just a moment ago, or earlier, I had observed that uh, uh, Argonaut, or its predecessors, Jackson or Ione, may have scored a sectional a one, a sectional championship in the past, but it's too far back for us to remember. Clark Hoover says the section was formed in 1942, and he can assure me that since 1942, neither Ione, nor Jackson, nor Argonaut, has ever won a sectional championship in anything. So this will be the first sectional championship for those schools. Boring fouls down the left field line. So we're in the top of the seventh inning here in Lodi. Tony Zuppo Field, what a wonderful facility it is. Now, we have a couple of hundred or so Argonaut fans down here tonight. In fact, some other load fans. We've seen Amador baseball players and Dennis Larson and Sandy are here. And, uh, a hit to right field by Boring, and a run will score. So, that is the first hit that I remember Sean Boring getting in the playoffs. He sparkled in the infield, but that may be the first hit. So Scott Nolan, who's pitched uh, mostly very well, but still allowed seven runs, I guess is going to go out of there, and uh, Nava will come in. Fernando Nava will be the relief uh, uh, pitcher. So uh, when we return, it will be... Nava on the mound and Gonzalez and Bird the batters. Only on cable, only on TSPN, Amador's local television station. An ERA of five uh, a point, uh, well, about five runs a game. So he gives up more runs than Nolan does. So boring the sophomore. Uh, on there with his first playoff hit, as far as I can remember, and at bat is Mark Gonzalez, who last time up doubled. Mark has a lot of power, although a spare frame. Nava throws over to first baseman Nunes and back. So Argonaut here in the top of the seventh, leading seven to nothing over Legrand, the second place team in the Southern League, on the verge of their first sectional championship ever by Argonaut, by uh, Jackson, or by Ione, all its predecessor school. Thank <laughs> you. 
Going to second is Boring. The throw is high, and Boring goes in with a, a stolen base. Uh, the throw was intended to Nolan, went beyond him, and backing up the play was Guzman, who I see is now playing shortstop. No, check that. Uh, still Castaneda. So uh, he backed it up nicely to prevent Boring from going further. So Boring steals second. So nobody out here in the top of the seventh, and uh, the uh, Argonaut Mustangs uh, not only want to win the sectional championship, but they want to get some more runs. So they have seven already, and nobody out. Uh, so there's a sophomore at second, a junior at the bat, and there's a high pop-up in the infield. Castaneda, the infielder, has got it. And that's one down here in the top of the seventh. I believe we're having a pinch batter, and I think Rick Parman, number 10, is going to bat. And uh, this may be the first time that Rick has batted for uh, several, several games. <clears throat> and his brother in the stands and uh, others, uh, he has his own clack over here. So Rick Parman up for the... So Coach Dave Gonzalez is trying to let everybody play in this sectional game, which is very uh, a very nice thing to do. Good cut by Rick. And you won't blame him if his timing's off because he hasn't played in the game in quite a while. I guess he's had batting practice with everybody else. For chainsaws, weed trimmers, log splitters, mowers, shredders, and blowers, Guy's Saw Center, for parts, service, and savings, you can't go wrong with Guy's. Pass ball or wild pitch, I'm not sure which. Boring goes to third base. You know what, Guy's, it's huge showroom, assures you a large selection of outdoor toys for grown-up boys. So see the professionals at Guy's Saw Center and Highway 88, across from the bank of Stockton and Pine Grove. Nava, the new pitcher, on the mound. He gave up a, a single to Boring. And Rick Parman took a strike right through the heart of the plate for strike two. Or is that strike three? Scoreboard says two, but there goes Parman, so it must be strike three. Nava's got good speed. He blazed that one by Parman. Now, Chris Barnett who went into left field last inning. He's the batter, and uh, Chris is only a junior, and he's a, he's a good hitter. So he's up there facing Nava here in the top of the seventh inning with Argonaut leading seven to nothing and on the verge of their first sectional baseball championship and their first uh, sectional championship in anything. Again, we repeat, Coach Dave Gonzalez is getting everybody into the lineup. We haven't mentioned as often as we should that Dave's been helped all season long by assistant coach Eldon Gibson. And uh, <clears throat> strike. As Chris Barnett is up there, reminds me that uh, I was talking with his dad uh, this morning. Curveball, Nava strikes out Barnett to end the top of the seventh inning. So after six and a half complete, it is seven to nothing. And uh, Legrand coming up for its last at bats. Argonaut three outs away from the sectional championship. on cable, only on TSPN, Amador's local television station. And now back to the game of the week. Argonaut versus Legrand, the championship game from 1990, with sportscaster Larry Sonato. Prospect Motors is the overall sponsor of this CIF section championship game on the Game of the Week. The final inning, the final ups, and uh, up there is Fernando Nava, the relief pitcher and the designated hitter. So Gary Thomas has three outs, 
And Argonaut's got a championship. I guess that one was inside. I'm not sure what was wrong with that one. Argonaut had leads seven to nothing here in the bottom of the seventh. Three outs, and they're sectional champions. Thomas has allowed two hits. He's just trying to get him over, and he's a little high. So he's got ball three, strike one on Nava. The bottom of the seventh inning here at Tony Zuppo Field. Inside and high. So not the best kind of start in the bottom of the seventh. So Nava's at first, and Brandon Kale, the left fielder, is up there. They've only allowed two hits. Kale uh, hasn't gotten one of them. He's a 364 batter. Thomas's slow curve gets Kale to swing and miss. Strike one. Nob at first base getting a lead off. Thomas curveball. Beautiful fielder. Throws to second. Boring to first. Wild throw. They're safe at first. So they tried for a double play, pitcher to short to first, boring throw got past Andrews, but they forced the runner at second for one out, two outs remaining to go here at Tony Zupo Field, and Argonaut, champions of how many uh, Division Three schools in the section? The commissioner is checking that one in his computer, and we'll see if we can come up with it. Curveball, I guess high. Twenty-four, but Jonathan Nunes, the first baseman's up there with one down. Kales at first base. One down the bottom of the seventh. Thomas throws over. Andrews uh, didn't catch it, but I forgot about that. That uh, Well, uh, the Mets on his good uh, arm or wrist. So the commissioner says between 40 and 45 uh, Division uh, three high school teams in the section. Fastball, I guess, at the letters and over the plate for strike one. One and one. So Argonaut, the best baseball team, and since they beat Folsom three out of four the last three years, maybe they ought to be ranked number one in the state. Slow curveball, strike two. We're going to start a we're going to start a campaign for Cal High Sports to make sure that Argonaut's ranked number one in the state. If Folsom can do it, so can we. Fastball swing, and he struck him out. That is two outs, one out away. Get excited, get excited. One out away from a sectional baseball championship. Gary Thomas, one of the outstanding baseball players in all of Northern California, probably the best hitter, the highest average, top pitcher, he and his mates on the verge of making history for Argonaut High School. Strike one. The batter is number two, and that is Sam Gonzalez, the right fielder. Two outs, bottom of the seventh inning. Strike two, foul ball down the right field line. One pitch away from history. Everybody's standing up. They're standing up here at Tony Zuppo Field. In fact, everybody is. I believe maybe LeGrand fans too. No, I guess mostly Argonaut. A two-strike count against Sam Gonzalez. Oh, he, he tried so hard that he threw that one wildly and uh, Joe Evans prevented it from being a wild pitch. It really doesn't make much difference right now. Ball one, strike two. Thomas needs one more good pitch, and he really wanted that one. He put a lot of extra on it, and it went wild. <laughs> Fouled again. So Sam Gonzalez, a tough out here in the bottom of the seventh. Two down, Argonaut leading seven to nothing. The sectional championship one out away here at Tony Zuppo Field in Lodi. And since 1942, Argonaut or Jackson or Ione has not won a sectional championship, but they're on the verge. Boy, Sam Gonzalez sends a screamer 
over the fence and out near the uh, entrance of uh, the field here in Lodi. So he's he's fighting off that third strike. And Thomas is bearing down and it's now two and two. So Sam Gonzalez is giving Gary Thomas a, a fight for that final out. Curveball gets away from Evans and no no point in uh, drop something here. No point in trying to run three and two pitch on Sam Gonzalez. Thomas got it. Throws to first base. It's over. Oh, great, great, great victory. The Argon Mustangs, sectional champions. The Argon Mustangs bring the championship to the Motherload League. And Jackson and Amador County. Argonaut seven, Legrand nothing. A convincing victory in the championship game. No doubt about who is the superior team this year. Defeating Folsom 4-1. to one. Defeated Hilmar. Defeated Modesto Christian. And defeated Legrand 7 to nothing in the championship game. And only four seniors are going to be gone from this team. And they will be back. And we will be back for the award presentations by the commissioner of the San Joaquin section, Commissioner Clark Coover, after this. Classic sports, only on cable, only on TSPN, Amador's local television station.